years ago the pioneers pushed west but here in these mountains some of them stayed to farm the fertile land to live well by axe and gun and plow now the land is no longer rich the crop is smaller every year but the people remain hemmed in by the mountains cut off from the changing world outside the men who first broke the land planted corn today corn is still the only crop the forests are gone now. The cornfields dot the hillsides where once there were hickory and chestnuts. Men who logged off the forests are dead. Their graves on the crest of the hill. But the land remains, and the sons of the sons of the men who cleared it still plant the corn from the same old seeds. The round of the years finds them lost in old ways, their lives set in old patterns, in worn out grooves. New ideas are not easy to come by when learning passes from mouth to mouth, from father to son.
Corn and pork. Corn pone and pork sausage and pork gravy. The hog slaughtered in the fall must last the winter. The hog provides the shortening for the cornbread, the meat for the sausage, and the grease for the gravy. Often there isn't enough to eat, never the right things to eat. No green vegetables and milk, no calcium for teeth and bones, no vitamins to prevent rickets and scurvy. Weak bones from poor food, poor food from poor land. Kids growing up to the same years of hunger. Babies being born without a chance of strong bodies. These are good people, proud people. Sons and daughters of pioneers. Cousins of the people who built America. This is the school. Twenty-four children go to the school. Some of them live a long way off. In the spring there is mud. In the winter there is snow. Here in this room the children learn to read, to write and to figure. They use the same books that all the other children in the state use. The same books as the children use in mining towns, in mill towns, and in great industrial centers. Some of them are good books, but they talk about another kind of world. The books do not tell of how to rotate crops and what makes balanced farming. They do not name the way lessons can be applied to the mountain people. The children learn to call the words and what makes 17. This is not enough. The mountain people live close to the earth and the sky. They know the call of every wild bird and where the best herbs grow. They know the name of every tree and where the hornets have their nests. They do not know what to do about their own lack of food and clothing and shelter. <coughs> It said, Mr. Curtis, one day, that one of the great, greatest factors in success is for a young fellow to learn 
thief, thrift, thrift, and murder it in his early state. No matter how little I save my five and ten cents at, at, at a time. Take a young fellow, take a young man who follows his policy of saving. He gets a little nest egg in the bank. He gets a chance to buy some good investment or a share in the business in which he is engaged as an employee. There is the nest egg in the bank which he can fall back upon. Suppose he wants to buy his first home and has not enough money. There again comes the value a bank account in, the, in there. He can go to a banker, show him what he has saved. Demonstrating. Demonstrating that he is thirsty. Thrifty. Thrifty. Next year, the children will study materials prepared in their own communities to teach them facts of soil and food, along with reading and writing. Somehow, some way, the old folks manage to get along. But the children must learn a new way. The land is tired of corn, but small plots of it could be enriched for raising vegetables. The children must learn to raise goats for milk. must learn to reforest the hills. It's too late now for the old ones. The children must learn.